when you have great decision makers such as Gibson, Johnson, Alex Johnson, as well as Justin Johnson, recognizing where the strengths of the offense are, and where the weaknesses of the defenses are, it makes the game very easy. As you can see, they spread the floor very well there in that two-man game. And that's not the first time they've been able to do that then. They've been able to effectively do that every time down in their half-court sets when they're patient and they're attacking the Millrat defense. Time out on the floor, 542 to go here in the second quarter. Millrats have been pretty well in control of this basketball game since the early going, lead by a score of 42 to 31 here. And of course, they've been led by Gabe Freeman, 15 points as well as six rebounds. And of course, Leading Hurricane player right now is Hunt with seven points, and Johnson has three, as well as two assists here for the Hurricanes. So it's kind of interesting uh, matchup that we were we haven't really talked much about this. We want to say about the uh, Millrats, they're first in the league in rebounds versus the Hurricanes, which are number one in league offense. So I'll beg you to ask this question. Offense versus defense, usually defense wins most of the time. Well, that's how you win basketball games. You need to be able to defend, particularly in the fourth quarter. You know, it's a 48 minute basketball game, but in this league, we've seen, you know, leads dwindle at 25 points, 30 points. You know, it's it's a crazy league. So things where, where defense are, and game plans are installed, usually the teams that actually are effective in that fourth quarter playing defense win games. But offense, you know, this is a very offensive score. Every game you're going to get either one of the two teams scoring 100 points. That's a given in this league. You know, they, you know it's not a lot of stellar defense being played for the whole 48 minutes. But right now, this game is being lost by the Hurricanes because the points in the paint, they're losing that battle, 16 to 12. Second chance opportunities, they're losing that battle, the 11 and 2. And like, like you said, they're a good defensive and offensive rebounding team. The miracles are. So the adjustment need to be made here by the Canes that they need to know that the, you know, the Mill Rats are not going to you know, accept the one and done. They're going to fight tooth and nail to get the second and third chance opportunities. And this afternoon, they've been doing a good job, and that's the reason why they're out in front here in the second quarter. Hunt misses both three throws there, so still remains a 11-point deficit here for the Hurricanes, 42 to 31. 5.34 to go here in the second quarter. Anderson outside the arc, and they get it inside to Gabe Freeman. He's triple team and turns it over. Johnson has the ball, spins on Allman to avoid him, and then it's a cross-court pass high to Gibson. Comes down for it for the Hurricanes. Glover one on two, gets it over. Can't get the finish, but he'll get a second board. Puts it up, gets rejected by Stover. 6-10 advantage there, but a new 24 for the, for the Hurricanes. Johnson has the ball, slows things down, calls a play. Uses a Hunt screen there, double team. Hunt now has it. Hunt and finds Stover wide open. Or Glover, Glover wide open and puts it in. Yeah, a couple of mismatch there on that trip down. Mike Glover was being guarded by Doug Herring Jr. No disrespect to Doug Herring Jr., the smaller guard. I don't think he can play one-on-one -on -one inside that paint against Mike Glover. Anthony Anderson knocking down a three. Can't give him space. He'll knock down that triple all afternoon long. But right now the advantage is definitely the inside presence for the Hurricanes. They need to take advantage of that and look to get the ball inside. Six points for Anderson here. 417 to go as Glover once again draws contact. He gets fouled and he'll go to the line. And that's going to be the result right there. It's going to force a lot of pressure on the defensive side of things for the Mill Rats. Gabe Freeman as well as Stover trying to do their best. As you can see, is Glover with nice position underneath the basket. And that's not a good spot if you're a defender, and in particular Gabe Freeman to be right underneath that basket trying to guard Mike Glover. And of course what that does is that is Freeman's third foul. So he'll have to go to the bench and more will come in. So yeah, that hurts, that hurts big time there for the Millrats. But another advantage for 
the, the Hurricanes. We talked about that. If they need to do that, they need to try to put a lot of pressure on the, the Mill Rats and force their better players to play defense. And right now, as Coach Spawn is forcing in his hand that he needs to go to his bench right now in a time where the Hurricanes are getting back into this ball game. Freeman outside the arc to Anderson for three. Bounces in and out. And Alex Johnson has the ball now for the Hurricane. Just outside the arc over to, to Justin Johnson. Wide open for three. Can't finish. And the board by Anderson now for the Mill Rats. Outside to Doug Herring Jr. for three. Fast transition there, Vince, as Herring from, drains it from downtown. Makes it 47 to 13, 33. Johnson puts it up. Can't get it to finish, and Herring Jr. with the rebound. That was a big two trips down the court for the Mill Rats. We're able to dodge a bullet with a wide open jumper from Johnson, and then a, a triple knockdown from the other side of the court there, coming back the other way by Herring Jr., and a back to back double triples by Freeman. Freeman for three, and Hugo Lopez, not liking what he's seeing, calls a tie boat as this is the largest lead here for the Mill Rats. They're up 17. 50 to 33 over the Hurricanes. 3-11 to go here in the second quarter. And uh, just a reminder, folks, that the Hurricanes back in action Thursday night to take on the Island Storm here at the Scotiabank Center, 7 o'clock. Tickets available by going to TicketAtlantic.com or 902-451-1221. It's the first visit for the Island Storm taking on the Halifax Hurricanes, and it will be this Thursday night. So we look forward to seeing you then. Thursday, Island Storm, Hurricanes here at Scotiabank Center. A lot of adjustments being made in this timeout. 17 point bulge by the Mill Rats. You wouldn't tell if they were on a back to back thus far in the first 24 minutes of this game, but these guys are playing with a lot of pride, and that's the team that Coach Bond puts on the court. A team with a lot of pride. You know, they're not going to make excuses for being short manded. You know, they're not going to make excuses for not having guys here because of personal reasons, or guys not here because of injuries or illnesses. They're a professional basketball team, and the reason why they have they are first place is because of the leadership by their head coach, and it's showing dividends right now. Coach Bond's got a, a plus at least 75% winning percentage as a visiting coach here at Scotia Bank Center. So he knows how to get it done, and he knows how to, you know, get W's and right now the major adjustments need to be made by this, the Hurricanes here to try to get back into this and try to push this to a single single, single uh, lead deficit going into halftime. That is basically what the game plan is right now for the Hurricanes and Coach Lopez. Then. Glover with the put back makes it 50 to 35 for the Mill Rats here as the Hurricanes need some stops here, need to get some things going here to get some positives going into Halftime as Doug Herring Jr. tough bucket fade away gets it to go, 52 to 35. That's what Herring, do, Herring Jr. does. That's a very tough bucket fade away, drawing the contact as he was giving it to the official up the court looking for that M1. Shot clock down to eight as Alex Johnson in the paint to Glover and he's contacted by Stover for the foul and he'll go to line to shoot two. Hurricane sticking with the game plan of looking to get the ball inside to Mike Glover and Kyle Hunt. Very nice two man game created there in space between Johnson and Glover. Stover, that is his third foul. So foul's getting to be a bit of a difficult thing with a team that is nine players dressed for this game. Freebit has three, and Anthony Stover has three now, so there's definitely some chances there for inside attack there because they're going to try to prevent getting their fourth as we're going to see Denny McDonald make his first entrance into the game. Denny McDonald is from Mississauga, Ontario, 6'6", 220 pound forward here. Hasn't seen a lot of playing time so far, but he's going to be needed here with the short pitch today. All nine guys are going to see some action this afternoon for the Mill Rats. Heavy minutes by the reserves. Allman hands it to Doug Herring Jr. He's watched by Bertrand, tries to draw some contact. Play goes on as the shot clock's winding down to two, and Allman puts it up. 
And there for the board, there is Justin Johnson. He'll put it up, he has room, drains it. Justin Johnson from downtown makes it 40 to 52 for the Mill Rats. Very nice shot by Johnson in rhythm. Anderson giving him space, can't allow him to give him that much space. Double team there as Herring Jr. has the ball now. Shot clock winding down, it's down to six. Uses the screen. And there's McDonald, and it makes a nice little dipty move. Skipped to Malou to get it in. Yeah, beautiful Euro step inside, splitting the defense and able to convert, attacking the rim. Bertrand with a wide open corner, three, and sinks it. Both teams trading baskets. It's not what the Hurricanes want, though. They need some stops here on the defensive side here. First bucket of the game for Bertrand. Under a minute to go here till halftime. Millrats up 54 to 43. Doug Herring Jr. trying to get it inside to Moore. Has his pass picked off and Gibson going back the other way, lays it up. And they have cut this down to a single digit deficit, 54 to 45. 30 seconds to go and an offensive foul and another chance for the Hurricanes to bring the lead down to within six or bring the Millrats lead from six or seven. So another opportunity and another stop on the defensive side. So they gotta continue to be aggressive, go with the game plan, get the ball inside here, use this half court set, this two man game either between Gibson, Johnson, uh, the Glover or Hunt. For McDonald, it was his first foul there for the Mill Rats. Bertrand has the ball outside the arc. There's Johnson now. Uses the Glover screen. Cuts it in towards the paint. Goes through two bodies. Back out to Bertrand. Another three. Can't finish this time. And Double A comes up with the ball. Shot clock shut off. So we're going to hold it here for one final shot. 54 to 45 here. At the Scotiabank Center, Anderson has the ball, shot clock, game clock down to threes, he puts it off, and it's no good, and the ball bounces out of bounds as the horn goes to end the first half. And the Millrats came out, and they've kept their pedal to the metal, and they lead here 54 to 45 after 24 minutes of play. Vince, let's get your uh, report card out on your keys of the game and see how the rating here what? as we hand it over to Mr. Williams, the teacher. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> they did a better job in the second quarter the Hurricanes did, as you can see in the indicative in the score with 54 points, not giving up the 32 points that they did in the first 12 minutes. Did a good job of closing out the quarter once again and going into the halftime break at a single the single digit deficit is what they needed to do. At one point they're trailing by 17 points so they did a good job there getting stops and creating offense on the other side of things, getting hands in passing lanes and getting into the open floor, getting wide open jump shots from beyond the arc, knocking down some big jumpers there and some easy takes going and attacking the rim. These are the things that they need to do and carry over into the third quarter if they're going to come all the ways back and win this game here this afternoon. On the other side of things, I mean, the Mill Rats, it's coming down to their nine players. It's coming down to how much they can get out of those nine players not getting their big players in the foul trouble. Gabe Freeman got into foul trouble in that second quarter, and he had to exit the game. So another offensive weapon taken away from Coach Spawn. But on the other side, they had weapons still on the floor with Herring Jr. and Anderson. Those guys need to be neutralized in the second half. So Coach Lopez has got to draw up a game plan and make an adjustment to neutralize those two guys as they are starting to get their way now in their individual play with their one-on-one -on -one play, knocking down shots, tough shots in the lane, drawing the contact, or open threes coming off screen. So adjustments made by both sides, but I like where the Hurricanes are right now going into the third quarter. They just need to build on the things that they were doing at the end of the second quarter if they're going to be successful this afternoon. And speaking of a third quarter, we'll have that in just about 15 minutes from now as we wrap up the first half. Once again, the score is the St. John Mill Rats 54, the Halifax Hurricanes 45, back in 15 with third quarter action. You're watching Hurricanes and NBL basketball here on YouTube. So 
I'm not gonna be here in the next game, so like that'll that'll make it twelve minutes, but I don't know if we'll be set on that. I don't wanna really get good to it. And welcome back to the Scotia Bank Center in downtown Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's Halifax Hurricanes and NBL basketball. The St. John Mill Rats leading the Halifax Hurricanes 54 to 45. I'm Dan Hobson along with Vince Williams and we take a look at the first half stats here. And of course the field goal shooting percentage for the St. John Mill Rats definitely better than their 30% they had last night. They're shooting about 49% here in the early going, and they're led by Gabe Freeman, who has 18 points and eight rebounds. But Vince, he's in a little bit of foul trouble as he's got three, as well as Stover has three as well. So a short bench and three fouls. So definitely a second half that the uh, big forwards here for the Hurricanes can take advantage of here to cut this deficit down to within maybe a bucket or three. Yeah, if I'm Coach Spawn, I'm definitely ha proud and happy with the results in the first 24 minutes from my team coming off a back-to-back, -back, losing last night at Harbor Station to the Island Storm. And the result, the resilience they've showed in the first 24 minutes is pretty outstanding with a short bench of nine players. And your best players having their best game right now is pretty good. Foul trouble may be an issue here in the second half, so Coach Bond's going to have to manage those minutes for Gabe Freeman. But Gabe Freeman was very explosive offensively in the first 24 minutes, the Hurricanes had no answer for them defensively. On the other side, the Hurricanes, I like the job that they are doing, looking to get the job inside done, the job done inside the painted area with Mike Glover and Kyle Hunt and Billy White. They need to do more of that, to spread the basketball around, play that two-man game because the Mill Rats are having problems guarding that two-man game. The guards of the Hurricanes are making great decisions coming off the ball screen and look and finding the open man cutting towards the rim, but they need to get stops defensively. This game is going to be won or lost on the defensive side. Original starters back on here for St. John, Stover, Allman, Anderson, Herring, and Freeman. And the original starters for the Hurricanes. As Glover will now have a chance to complete the three-point play. You see, draw the contact and tough hoop, but gets it to go and he'll have a chance to complete it. Yeah, picking up where he left off in the end of that second quarter is Mike Glover picking up his 15th point. They need to pound the ball, continue to pound the rock inside and feed the beast of Mike Glover because right now they have no answer and there is no answer on the defensive side of things for the Mill Rats. I'm, pretty sure, I'm almost positive there's, there's no answer in this division for Mike Glover in the painted area. And we have a delay in as a part as uh, Billy White is hobbling off on one ankle to the uh, bench there. So he's going to get yeah, assisted here sign. by training staff. Yep, that's, that's not a good sign at all there, Dan. It's either a knee or an ankle. And that's not a good sign of that three big man rotation that Coach Lopez likes to run with Chriswell, Glover, and White. So this is going to be interesting going forward here in the second half, what type of management of the minutes of his bigs are going to be for Lopez. The Mill Rats League, which was as high as 17, is now down to six. 
St. John Melrats 54, Halifax Hurricanes 48. 30 seconds gone here in the third quarter. Anthony Anderson with the floater. Can't get it to finish. Rebound there by Freeman with the offensive board and puts it back there. That gives him 20 now for Gabe Freeman. Millrats, eight point lead, 56 to 48 here. Glover now, watched by Stover. Does a fake, now takes it toward the hoop, puts it up, bags it off the glass, can't get the finish, clink scales there, outside to Gibson for three. And the rebound there by Freeman and hands the ball to Anderson. Wide open look there for Gibson. It looked like he kind of rushed that three point shot. Nobody closed out for the Millrats. So a missed opportunity on that offensive trip down. And Anderson gets fouled there. Official Ryan Lutz made the call and it's going to Mike Glover. Anderson will go to the line to shoot two three throws and he is a 85% three throw shooter here for the Mill Rats here in the early going this season. Yeah, he's pretty much clutch from the free throw line. It's Anthony Anderson. Gets the first one to go. For Glover, that's his first foul there for the Hurricanes, so he's still okay in terms of fouls there. Not in as much foul trouble as Freeman as well as Stover for the Mill Rats, as Vince and I have mentioned throughout the end of the second quarter and a little bit here early in the third. There's a three that's no good. Gibson will get it back and a new 24 for the Hurricanes. Clink scales the floor general. Calls out the play. Swings it over to Criswell. Watched by Freeman. Now Bertrand has it. Outside to Clink scales. Shot clock down to 10. Clink scales with a dribble. In towards Glover. Spin. Puts it up. Tough go but gets it to go for two. Beautiful move. Creating space and spinning. Out of trouble, back in the trouble, looking for contact was Mike Glover, but a nice dribble drive penetration by Clint Scales, breaking out his defender. As you can see in that replay, Glover with very nice feet and very nice patience around the rim. He is a, a lethal assassin when it comes to one of two feet away from the basket then. Mike Glover gets called for the foul. That's his second here. Hurricane's second foul of the quarter. And that was too easy for Volsey, but he couldn't finish. And another put back there doesn't go. Mill Rats have it. They turn it back out for three from downtown is Allman. Trend continuing the dagger there is Allman left wide open. Second, third chance opportunities for the Mill Rats, but coming right back down the other way is Bertrand. Want to see Bertrand get a little bit more aggressive and involved offensively in this third quarter. He's a very nice athletic three man. They're trying to put a lot of pressure on that defense of the Mill Rats. I mean, you got Anthony Anderson guarding, so it should be, he should look for Bertrand to get a little bit more offensively involved. Clink Scales called for the foul. That's his first, a third team foul here as the Scotiabank crowd lets the referees know about it. They didn't think too much about it as they start getting on them here for a couple of little light touch fouls as Herring Jr. puts it up and in. Doug Herring Jr. continuing to be aggressive and looking to get his offense going early in this third quarter, and that's what's going to happen. The three-headed monster by the Millrats. Herring Jr. has 12 now. Inside to Glover, watched by Volsey, and up and over, and does get the roll to go in, and he's going after the referees looking for some fouls there. None came, but he got it to go anyway, Vince. Just no answer for the big fella. He's able to back down Volsey two feet from the basket. Gibson to Criswell with speed up and in and a chance to complete the three-point play. Very unselfish play there by Gibson in transition and running the floor without the basketball. As you can see, Criswell on the backside, the defensive recovery on the backside on the helpline just a little late there. You can't reach in on a big man like Criswell. He's on a going to going to play through the contact, take the harm, and finish off the basket and off the backboard, and that's exactly what he did. A very nice finish, and picking up the slack here for Billy White, who had to go out of the, had to leave this game with an injury. And the foul was to Gabe Freeman. That's his fourth. No rats had the basketball. Herring Jr. crosses the timeline, cuts towards the paint, goes through a couple of trees, and he'll. Draw the contact as the foul was Mike to Mike Glover. 
He's had no, didn't have any fouls the first half here. We haven't even reached the three and a half minute mark and he's got three so far in this quarter. As you can see there, a nice dribbled penetration drive there by Herring Jr. able to cross over Bertrand and blow by him with the left hand, forcing Glover to up the lane and he picks up his third. So the chess match continues here for both coaches trying to manage minutes from their most productive offensive player. Yeah, both Gabe Freeman and Glover have 20 points, but foul's getting to be an issue. Three for Glover and four for Freeman as Herring Jr. goes two of two from the line, 65 to 57. Quick scales, alley-oop to Bertrand. Sweet move, Ed, sweet move. Very nice play there. Without the basketball, cutting off the basket, cutting without the basketball is Bertrand, and I spoke about him getting more involved offensively, but he's got to do a better job defensively, and a very nice play there with the block shot, but a second chance opportunity once again there, Dan. Gabe Freeman has 22 now for the Mill Rats, and a foul before Glover can have a chance to finish it. Going against Ricky Volsey. Yeah, it's becoming a major problem. And that's going to be Spahn. his fourth, too. Yeah, major problem, Dan, for Coach Spawn here, developing as Mike Glover's basically got it going. And now they're basically running a bunch of guys at Mike Glover now. You're going to see a lot of guys from the bench, from the limited bench, as Coach Spawn has, to try to run Glover off his sweet spot. It's going to be up to McDonald and Moore to get some minutes here because. Stover, as well as Volsey and Freeman have four fouls as Bertrand from downtown nails that. Five point deficit for the Hurricanes, 67 to 62. As Lopez is trying to get the Scotiabank crowd going to make some noise here. They've been quiet this afternoon. Freeman with the floater and gets it to go. Timely spot here in the defensive side. Unable able to get that big stop and try to push over the threshold here, but I do like the offensive aggressiveness by the Hurricanes. Loose ball there, come up by the Mill Rats. Freeman going coast to coast. Yeah, you can just see it in the eyes of Freeman when he grabbed that rebound that he was looking to attack the rim. It was either somebody was going to stop him from getting to that point, but he was a man on the mission when he grabbed that defensive rebound. As you can see in the replay here, Gibson, missed shot is Freeman coming back the other way. The, looks like the camera was taken out on the back end, so we didn't get to see the follow up the court there. By we Gabe have Freeman. great jobs, they have hard jobs. Exactly. <laughs> Freeman puts it up, can't finish there. Clink Scales with the rebound there. Clink Scales has speed up the other way, but there's going to be an offensive foul, and it's going the other way. Yeah, it looks as like Criswell's going to be called. Yeah, Dan, it looks like Criswell was impeding the progress of the defender there in transition and allowed that open gap for Clint Scales to bounce that potential pass there and an easy bucket on the other end. So the Mill Rats dodge a bullet in the defensive transition here, that last offensive trip down by the Canes. Five minutes gone here in the third quarter. Still a seven-point deficit, 69-62. to 62. Clint Scales with to Criswell, tic-tac-toe, and up for two. And that's what you get out of Clint Scales. The precision attacking in transition coming off of a defensive rebound or a turnover. He can get up and down the court the other way and he's very meticulous finding the open man running the floor. Moore as they swing it, Anderson now cuts towards the paint as the shot clock's down to four. Herring Jr. for three, sinks it. Yeah, you gotta get a hand up. You gotta challenge the shooter, Doug Herring Jr. He can get it done inside and outside, and he's been displaying his full barrage of offensive plays this afternoon here at Scotia Bank. So you gotta challenge the shooters here. You can't allow them to put your hand down. Hand down, man down. He's gonna knock down that triple from beyond the arc. And Freeman has his double-double as he came up with his 11th rebound there to go along with his 20-something points, 24. And that's a tough call there on Anthony Anderson call for too many steps. Drew the contact and looked like he definitely disagreed as well as Coach Bond disagreed there as he's having a conversation with the yeah. fans in the front row. 
Yeah, I'm sure that our microphones heard that Spawn was saying no, as he did not agree with us. We have a timeout on the floor with 5.55 to go here in the third quarter. The St. John Mill Rats on top of the Halifax Hurricanes, 72 the 64. We just want to remind everybody that the next Hurricane home game will be Thursday night against the Island Storm, 7 o'clock. The Island Storm, of course, fresh off their victory over the Mill Rats last night. And, of course, they were led by Malcolm Grant, who had 24 points, as well as Nick Evans, 21 points, 10 of 13 from the field. So the Island Storm, of course, now third place, but they're looking to move on up here with a win over the Hurricanes Thursday. And if you want tickets, go to 902-451-1221. And of course, we still have season tickets available. And if you want to do get season tickets, all you have to do is go to info, email info at halifaxhurricanes.ca or call the Hurricanes office at 902-473-1846. As you folks say at home, they're getting ready to do the t-shirt toss. So what was a nine point deficit is still an eight point deficit as the teams have gone back and forth here. Uh, Halifax has a slight advantage in this quarter, 19 to 18 in terms of points. But you know, the thing is, you mentioned it, basketball games can be won or lost in the fourth quarter, so. Yeah, if they could just keep this tight and keep it to a single point deficit going into the fourth quarter. They can work their way off, and then it's going to come down to which team is fresher. You got nine guys on the rats trying to go a full 48 minutes. You got a you know a full complement of 12 and maybe 11 now for the Halifax Hurricanes going into that fourth quarter. So game management of minutes is going to be very key. And there was miscommunication there, and Bertrand thought the ball went off the Millrats player, but it didn't, and so it's gonna be a turnover to the Hurricanes and Millrats basketball, 5.44 to go in the third. Yeah, not the type of possession you wanna come on the half coming out of that time out there for the Hurricanes. Allman outside to Anderson, and swings it across to Doug Herring Jr., dumps it inside to Freeman, makes a move, cuts it back towards Herring Jr. for three. And the ball's tipped out of bounds off the Mill Rats, and it would be Hurricanes basketball. So some better defensive play there for the Hurricanes. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. Bertrand doing a good job of closing out with his hands up and making it very difficult for Herring Jr. to knock down that triple. You can't allow him to have a good look at that shot from beyond the arc. Got to make it tough for these shooters for the Mill Rats. Stover's back in the game. Freeman will sit here. And Hunt with the hook shot, couldn't get it finished, but Triswell's there with the putback to put it in. And the Mill Rats continue to, to not play that two-man game well, continue to be attacked there, and I like the offensive mind of things by the Hurricanes attacking him that way. Criswell has 10 points in this game there. Herring Jr. one on three, spins and shoots and gets it to go. Getting it all this afternoon from Doug Herring Jr. inside, outside. A little bit of a defensive matchup inside, as you can see there, between him and Clint Scales. And that's going to be a little bit of a chess match here going forward. 74 to 66 with the shot fake. Bertrand into Criswell, and he's fouled there by Stover. That will be his fifth. And Spawn, as you can say, is trying to say it's, it's on 34. Ball, it's the... It's definitely trying to protect his players here. Trying to protect his starters as he doesn't want his big man Stover in any type of foul trouble. As he'd much rather have the reserve <laughs> get to pick up that personal. Well, you and I are familiar with AUS. It was always familiar for Ross Quackenbush any time that Joey Haywood got a foul. No, it wasn't Joey's, you know. They tried to keep him in the game. It was just almost like a repeat of that except for... It was definitely Stover. Cause yeah, it's universal. It's all around the league where your best players, you don't want your best players in the foul trouble because you can't play them, right? They can't be effective. You need them on the floor in key situations. So this will bring McDonald back in, or pardon me, Volsi, he'll come back in. Stover had probably a couple of minutes and now your microphone's picked up what he thought about that. He thought it was crazy, folks. 
74 to 67, seven point deficit here. Doug Herring Jr. has the ball now for the Mill Rats as he crosses the timeline. Watched by Bertrand, swings it over to the wing to Allman. Double team for a second. Volsey was open as they swing the ball around and Anthony Anderson for three gets it to go. He was wide open. Good ball movement there by the Mill Rats and Anderson does what he does best, shooting threes. Excellent ball movement by the Mill Rats and a huge dagger by double A. Hunt lost the ball for a second, gets it back. Klingskills has it now. Shot clock down to 10, Klingskills for three. Not really his game, but came up well short. And the Mill Rats had the basketball. And they're up by 10, 77 to 67. 340 to go here in the third. Canes need a stop right now, Dan. And Anderson gets fouled and Clay Scales not too happy about it. Looks up to the sky and looks up to the cr crowd and not too happy about it as you'll see it at home. Rotation there was, th was made by the ball and a nice blow by dribble there with the left hand by Anderson. As Clint Scales was at a disadvantage right off the rotation of the basketball. Anderson was able to take what the defense gave him, and that was a clear path going with his left hand to the rim, was able to draw the contact. Anderson, one of two there, gives him three of four, 75% in this game here. Substitutions being made as Alex Johnson comes in for Bertrand. Bertrand. This game, 10 points, four fouls, a little bit on the eve of being in foul trouble here, but not as bad as the Mill Rats here. 3.30 to go here. Hurricanes down, 78 to 67. Clink Scales has the ball outside the arc. Shot clock at 10, takes it in, swings it over to Criswell, up and over more and gets it to go with the floater. Criswell, 13 points. 78 to 69, nine point deficit here as the fans start the all defense here at the Scotia Bank Center. Allman now swings it over to Volsey. From downtown, can't hit, but they'll get a second chance. No, it was tipped by Criswell to over to Klinkscales. They have numbers. Johnson wide open, fakes the shot, takes it strong, draws contact, and one. Beautiful play there, great patience by Anthony Johnson. Excuse me, Alex Johnson with a nice move off the, as you can see in the replay, good pump fake. Gets his man, draws a contact and finishes through the harm. Alex Johnson, a good spark coming off the bench here all season long for the Hurricanes. There's been key spots and key moments here at Scotia Bank where Alex Johnson has stepped up offensively as well as defensively. Breakdown defensive coverage there for the Hurricanes. They weren't quick getting back as Allman lays it up there, makes it 80 to 71 for the Mill Rats. 2.35 to go here. A couple of Johnsons as well as Criswell, Hunt and Clink Scales on the court here for the Hurricanes as Alex Johnson has the ball, uses the Hunt screen, now hands it out to Hunt, wide open as Criswell puts it up and can't get it to go. Bounced off the rim and out. Got the look they wanted there in that possession, just unable to knock down the jumper. Shot clock winding down to 10, and there's two to go here in the third. Herring Jr. puts it up. That was a low percentage shot in my opinion, but he's gonna go to the line to shoot two three throws. Well, I tell you what, Dan, Doug Harry Jr. does think that's a low percentage shot. That's very high percentage shot for Doug Herring Jr. creating off the bounce. You've seen some unbelievable finishes by Herring Jr. either here at Scotia Bank Center or at Harbor Station. This guy's just been provided a barrage of you know, offensive plays. Either, you know, either it's coming off the bounce, either it's beyond, beyond the arc. The guy's got a good offensive game. Doug Herring Jr., 19, po 19 points in this one here, 82 to 71. He finished the fence's point, he just makes shots that you don't think he's gonna make. As Gibson puts it up, he can't get it to finish there, and a board there, so some solid menace here for Denny McDonald in a tough roll here. Some of the power forwards here for the Mill Rats in foul trouble, but he comes up with the board there for the Mill Rats. 
Anderson on a double team now. And that left McDonald wide open, or pardon me, more wide open, and he's fouled. Yeah, the rotation late there by the Canes. Did a good job of closing out as the shot clock continued to dwindle. Kyle Hunt got in the no man's land there, and he picks up a personal. A tough night shooting, as you can see in the replay here. Good screen by McDonald. Good double team, but rotation a little late. Getting to the open floor, moving out the basketball was Moore. Moore gets the first one in. He's a 75% three throw shooter. Three of four coming into tonight's game, this afternoon's game, and finishes it off there. Two of two from the line as Glover comes in. 89 seconds left here in the third quarter. I think Rob Spawn loves coming to Halifax here. He talks a lot more to the fans here than he probably does his players' events. <laughs> Having a conversation just a couple seconds ago. Very yeah. personal coach is Rob Coach Spawn, a good friend of mine. Very good friend of the league. Very positive head coach for a coach, for, sorry, GM Ian McCarthy and this Mill Rats organization. Anderson tried to shoot the three, but no good, and allowed the Hurricanes to come back. Now, Alex Johnson from downtown. Huge shot, timely shot once again by Superman Johnson. Canes need a stop here though. Herring Jr. almost lost the handle, but Allman was back in the corner three, puts it up, but Hunt there for the rebound. In transition, Glover, but he's gonna be fouled from behind, so he'll go to the line to shoot two three throws. Yeah, tough break coming from behind was Denny McDonald, but a nice Ural step in control of his body was Mike Glover. Take a look here in the replay, a beautiful Ural step, but drew the contact from behind as he was, un was, he, as he was able to avoid picking up the charge call there in the lane on Doug Herring Jr. Good night from the line here for Glover. He just made that one, so he's seven of nine and came into this one was right around 61%, so he's doing better than he has throughout the season here tonight here at the Scotia Bank Center, and finishes that one. Another 20 plus 20, game. 24 now there for the big man from Brooklyn. Another 20 plus game there from Mike Glover. In that reserve role, Dan, very important. It always seems to come in the reserve role. 84 to 76. 20 seconds to go as Allman kisses it off the glass and in. That's a tough shot there and a tough defensive breakdown there for the Hurricanes. As Allman was able to get that runner to go. Not sure if he, if he even seen the rim on that attempt. Hurricanes gonna hold it here for the last shot as the game clock is down to 3.1 seconds and the ball will go out of bounds. A tough night continues for Shane Gibson. He's three for nine from the field, 0 for four from beyond the arc. The Hurricanes rely heavily on Gibson's, you know, job to knock down shots from beyond the arc, and he's just having a tough one here in the first three quarters. But we have a fourth, and that's the big thing about this game. There's still lots of time, 12 minutes to finish up and finish strong. It's not over. It's a 10-point deficit. And of course, uh, we had some technical, technical difficulties on Friday, but the Hurricanes were actually down in that game to the Moncton Miracles by seven, and they ended up tying it, sending it to overtime, and then Bertrand with that, that miracle shot there to win it 124 to 121. Just a little bit more of some documentation of what Vince is saying, that this game is far from oh, being over yet. It is far from over. I mean, it could be a 20-point deficit, and we've seen some you know, 20 point, or in some cases, 30 point deficits been overcome here at Scotia Bank Center by either the home team or the opposition. So you're never out of it. Still 12 minutes left, lots of basketball left. Hurricanes can definitely right the ship here. Lots of time for Coach Lopez to make some major adjustments defensively, because offensively, they can score. They can score the basketball. They can score the basketball inside. They can score the basketball outside. They can score it in many of ways, either in the half court or the transition. The problem is, is the defensive rotations, their matchups, figuring out who's guarding who, 
getting back in defensive transition, not allowing easy buckets in their half court defensive sets, rotating in time, picking up the immediate threats and who the immediate threats are, recognizing who they are, closing out on those shooters, making it tough for them, and blocking out. Second chance opportunities are going to be key. Fouls and second chance opportunities and rebounds are going to be the deciding factor in this fourth quarter, whether the Hurricanes come out with a W or an L. Well, you were talking about second chance opportunities, looking at the third quarter stats here, the second chance points here. The St. John Millrats are doubling the Halifax Hurricanes 16 to eight. So stats it, don't lie, man. Yeah. The stats don't lie. Points in the paint pretty much even, Dan. Slight advantage for the Hurricanes, 36-32. No yeah. second chance opportunities. They're just, you know, getting it done. And points off of turnovers. The Hurricanes are doing a good job of there in doubling the advantage at 14 and seven. So when they do play the defense, the results are there. They're getting opportunities in transition and finishing and attacking in the rim. So it's all gonna come down to which team is gonna play solid defense and you know get it done on the defensive rebounding side of things. Fourth quarter should be a good one here. 10 point deficit for the Hurricanes, 86 to 76 for the Mill Rats. And on the court are both Alex and Justin Johnson, as well as Mike Glover, Hunt, and Gibson. Herring Jr., Anderson, as well as Moore, McDonald, and Allman. The five for the Mill Rats as McDonald puts that in and gets it to go. McDonald having himself a pretty good game. Four points there, all off the bench here. Does, didn't see a lot of regular, se regular season playing time up until tonight, but of course injuries as well as the situation with Al Stewart leaving the uh, team for personal reasons here. The reason why they have dressed nine this afternoon here at the Scotia Bank Center. Shot clock winding down as Hunch tries to go up. Tough call here, a three second call. Called inside the paint there on Kyle Hunt. He was active with the basketball, not sure why that turnover was called by the official on the baseline as you know, there was lots of movement. It wasn't like he was just standing there without the basketball ball stationary, so kind of confusing call there. Herring Jr. swings it over to Moore now, watched by Hunt. Moore's gonna take it strong, goes through two bodies and gets it to go. Or gets draws contact and he'll go to the line to shoot two three throws. So that was a pretty good decision there made by Moore. If you're Coach Spawn, if you can get some type of offensive output from Denny Moore and Darren, sorry, Denny McDonald and Darren Moore, you're pretty much going in the right direction if you can get some offensive productivity out of those two reserves. As you talked about it all game long, they've been, had limited minutes for Coach Spawn in the Mill Rats this season. So stepping up big this afternoon here. He was pointless in the game against the Iowa Storm, but he had seven in the previous game against the Moncton Miracles December 30th there. As it's a 14 point deficit, as Gibson from downtown drains that. Yeah, Gibson coming off a nice screen down the baseline and he needs to get going here in the fourth. And McDonald was too strong for that. Back come the Hurricanes, Johnson from downtown again as Gibson tries to get the Scotiabank crowd up to make some noise as they have, at one point it was a 14 point deficit, have brought it down to eight and they're on a 6-0 run. St. John Millrats 90, the Halifax Hurricanes 82. And we have a timeout there called by St. John with only a minute and 27 gone here in the quarter. Yeah, that forces Coach Spawn to a timeout. Back-to-back -back triples and consecutive trips. A nice half-court set. Shane Gibson coming off of the double screen, knocking down the triple, and then in transition. Great decision in the open floor there by Alex Johnson, giving it to Justin Johnson with a wide open look. Justin Johnson likes to hit that shot from the left side of the court. He's been very effective knocking down jumpers from that side from beyond the arc. We witnessed it Friday night <laughs> against the Moncton Miracles where there was four consecutive possessions where Justin Johnson in 30 seconds scored seven points. One of them a four point play and a three point shot to force overtime where they won it at the buzzer with a desperation heave 
by Joseph Bertrand. What an exciting night. We didn't get an opportunity to call it, but man, it was a pure pleasure to see it in person here, courtside, witnessing it. Because you could just feel it in the building, the excitement yeah. in the building that this team was going to make a run. And the funny part was, was that was one of Bertrand's only points that he had all night was he only had like one bucket prior towards that and then shot it from downtown. The only time he scored on the sheet. So, I mean, it's never it's Right place, right over. time. Absolutely, it was a huge shot as, you know, the Month of Miracles gave the Hurricanes everything they could handle on that night. And in some cases, if you're a Miracle fan or even Coach Langish, you deserve to win that game, but it just came down to the last four possessions in the ball game. And that's all it takes at this level. And funny, we were here when we saw the handshakes. It's like Hugo Lopez like had a, you know, like a head jot there for Ledges. Let's just say that's a tough one. It was a tough loss for the Miracles. They're now 0-5. Freeman off the bench, shot clock winding down, gets it to go from the elbow. Yeah, Dave Freeman, you can see it. He's got that look in his eye that he's gonna continue to attack offensively it's coming back into this game. And, this and Gibson starting to heat it up from downtown once again for another three. And that's what he does, and that's what we need to do. You need to get him involved offensively. He needs to be involved. He needs to get those touches and those looks coming off the screens in their half-court sets. Seven-point deficit, 92 to 85. Gabe Freeman, another bucket there. Gabe, Makes it 95 to 85. Gabe Freeman is a problem right now defensively for the Hurricanes. They uh -oh. need to find a way to try to neutralize Freeman, but it's a tough matchup for your big. You got Gabe Freeman essentially is a three. He's got a three man's body, but he's forced to play the four or the five for the Mill Rats, and that forces the Hurricanes' is four and five to extend outside the painted area where they're pretty much not comfortable playing defense off the bounce. So you're gonna give up two things. Either you're gonna give up Gabe Freeman driving to the basket, or you're gonna give up Gabe Freeman knocking down threes. And right now, Gabe Freeman is on a hot streak, and he is knocking down shots all over the court. Hunt from the line was is now two of five here. Seven points, completes that, will make it eight now, which is the exact deficit of this game. Mill Rats, 95, Hurricanes, 87. 9.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. Dan Hobson, Vince Williams, glad you could join us here, as well as the Silver Vision crew as that is a long distance two by Doug Herring Jr. 97-87, Johnson now swings it over to Glover, outside to Gibson. Gibson back to Glover. A Little bit of a loose ball fight there and Glover will come up with it and puts it through. Talk about making something out of nothing, Vince. Yeah, relentless. Mike Glover is just tough. It's too much to handle down inside two to three feet towards the basket. He's an absolute beast. But they need to get a stop right here. It's big, it's becoming big where stops need to come in bunches for the Hurricanes. Gibson watching Freeman now. Shot clock down to four. Freeman will put it up and good. That's the type of matchup he presents for the off, for the defense for the Hurricanes. A very difficult matchup for the Hurricanes. They need to try to figure out which guy can guard him. Either a guard needs to run at him or they need to run two guys at, at Freeman right now. But they need to take the ball and the game out of Gabe Freeman's hands because right now he's getting too much space. And the uh, interesting story is Freeman just got a technical foul. That's his fifth personal. As referee Ryan Lutz, who is a, a veteran official here in the AUS as well as CIS here and NBL, is having a conversation just right in front of our broadcast location to Rob Spawn explaining the situation. In the meantime, Justin Johnson will go and shoot the three throw here. So now things just go... The interest factor went from 10 to 12 now as Freeman has five. Yeah, that's a big swing here in this game. The Hurricanes need to take advantage of it though. They need to get, they need to execute offensively here. 99 to 90 here. Gibson downtown. 
Looks no like basket. Legal screen coming. Legal screen on Kyle Hunt. As well, I don't have to tell you what Scotiabank Center people feel about that. You can probably hear it in the background at home, folks. Crucial, few crucial possessions here by both teams. So once again, score remains. Mill Rats 99, Hurricanes 90. Turnover there. Anderson throwing into the feet of the Hurricane players. Gibson goes court to court and puts it in and lays it up for two. Outstanding recognition in the transition there by Shane Gibson. He knew that Gay Freeman had five fouls and couldn't afford to pick up his six, so he attacked the rim and was able to convert. Doug Herring Jr. with speed, banks it, and was too strong, and the board there by Hunt. Game starting to open up as the officials are starting to allow these guys to play back, down, battling back and forth, but a foul coming the other way there on Anthony Anderson, and a good take and aggression by Justin Johnson. Tension starting to flare here, Dan, in this fourth quarter. Yeah. Justin Johnson going to the line, 82% three throw shooter coming into this afternoon's game. Sinks the first one here to make it 99 to 93. So, of course, most of this half, this second half, Hurricanes have been down by eight. They have now closed this to within five here as Lopez and Clink Scales here clap and make some noise, try to get the Scotiabank Center Hurricane fans up and make some noise. 99 to 94 as the Millrats swing the ball. Freeman for three, can't finish. Tough close out there, making it tough by Glover. Good decision defensively. Up top to Glover, uses his height to his advantage to put it in as Spawn calls a timeout. Yeah, no answer for Mike Glover one or two feet away from the basket as he was able to back down Gabe Freeman. You can take a look at the replay here. Good positioning, soft hands, good touch around the rim, and Mike Glover's been pretty much dynamite all season long from that distance. 26 points for the big man. Once again, leading scorer here. Top scorer of the game has been Gabe Freeman, 31 points, and he's been perfect from the line. 12 of 18 from the field has been the mill rat forward Freeman, but as we've talked about, he's also in foul trouble. Nice. Also has 10 rebounds to go along, so he's got a double-double, but he's gonna be crucial here with the remaining 7-0-3. It's a here lot of go. time, it's a lot of time, and it's not, it's going, he's definitely gonna be a defensive liability for Coach Spawn and the mill rats here, so it's gonna be pretty interesting coming at this time out of Coach Spawn, how he's gonna draw his defensive execution against the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes, no doubt, is going to go. They're going to continue to pound the rock inside. They're going to continue to get it inside to Mike Glover. Mike Glover, right now, has pretty much been unstoppable from start to pretty much almost through the finish here. But they need to continue to be strong, continue to be getting stops on the defensive side, getting the one and dones, making it tough for Anderson, making it tough for Freeman, making it tough for Herring Jr. They got to be able to make sure that these guys take tough shots and don't forget to rotate and not allow. Corey Allman open looks from beyond the arc because he can hurt you late in this game as well. Allman has 18 coming in so far this one. 18 points, seven to 15 from the field as Vince mentioned. Three point game now. Mill Rats 99, Hurricanes 96. Less than seven to go here in the fourth. Anthony Anderson tries to get it over to Allman in the corner, it's deflected and the Hurricanes will come up with the basketball of a chance to tie. Johnson with the floater, too strong, and it's gonna go off a Hurricane player, and it would be Millrat's basketball, much to the dislike of this Scotiabank Center crowd. Yeah, the Millrats dodged a bullet there. Johnson, probably, as you can see in the replay, screaming in the corner there was Joseph Bertrand, and Shane Gibson was coming at the top of the key. Wide open, good decision though by Justin Johnson, was unable to convert, but a tough break for the Hurricanes there as the ball looked like it was knocked out of bounds by the Mill Rats. Six and a half to go, Allman has the ball, cuts towards the paint, tough shot, can't finish, and Gibson has the ball for the Hurricanes, and he's slowing things down, hands it to Johnson near the timeline. Johnson, Gibson, Glover, Hunt, as well as Bertrand out here for the Hurricane. Shot clock down to 10, over to Gibson, watched by Doug Herring Jr. Back out to Johnson, shot clock at six. 
over Allman for three, can't finish. And an offensive board there for the Hurricanes, but he was fouled and he'll go to the line. Good job moving out the basketball was Joseph Bertrand. Tough shot as the shot clock was dwindling there by Justin Johnson. Bertrand has been perfect from the line with limited three throws here. I believe around four of four. That time he sunk that one, so he's five of five. Memory serves me correct, 5.57 to go. And can't finish that one, so he'll go one for two from the line, but Hunt with a steal and puts it in. Huge, Tie game. Huge turn of events here in this offensive trip for the Mill Rats. A little unlucky as that 50-50 ball rattled around and Kyle Hunt with outstanding hustle was able to convert. Now we got a whole new ball game right now, Dan. Things are starting to get a little tight at Scotiabank for the Mill Rats. Volsey for three. Too strong, Anderson has it, kicks it back out for a new 24 for the Mill Rats. Allman back out to Doug Herring Jr. Lopez calling out a play to his players. Herring Jr., Hunt, one on one. Makes the move, cuts towards the point, pass picked off by Gibson. He was intended it for Anthony Anderson in the corner. A chance for the Hurricanes to take their first lead since the early going of the first quarter. Glover, one on two, puts it up and in. Yeah, unstoppable, he just took the school. Number 35, <laughs> no, excuse, excuse me, Again. Darren Moore. Yeah. Darren Moore was just taking the school underneath the paint, got another turnover there. They could see that the Mill Rats are starting to get a little bit frazzled there. They've had two straight turnovers. You can see it, a nice spin move back and forth, a dip under there, the help came a little late by Volsey as Darren Moore was left out in no man's land and no answer for Mike Glover. Mike Glover is an explosive, a beautiful player around the rim there inside that paint area, facing the rim or his back towards the basket. He can get it done. When he's inside there, it's pretty much game over. Stover back on, Moore to the bench. Stover has five here, 4.37 to go. Hurricanes up by two. Gibson from downtown sinks it. That was all the way from Mount Uniac, Vince. Shane Gibson getting it going. I spoke about how he needed to be involved in that third quarter going into the fourth. Anderson with a tough take gets that one. 104 to 101. Justin Johnson watched by Allman inside to Glover. Watched by Moore, back outside to Bertrand. Makes a move on Doug Herring Jr. A little bit of contact there. Gibson eludes Anderson for three and gets it. He is That's feeling it. He is absolutely feeling it. Shane Gibson. Got to call that one a two, pardon me. 106 to 101, but what a swing it has been here in the fourth quarter. You talk about championship teams knowing how to close it out. Hurricanes down by eight and now have a lead of five, but now it's down to three as there was a back bucket there by Stover, making it 106 to 103. Yeah, the veteran Anthony Anderson tried to calm down this Mill Rat team. They've been here before, and he's been in these situations on plenty of times, so he was able to back down his defender, draw the double team, and a nice move without the basketball with Stover and converting. Contact there between Bertrand, and he couldn't get it to finish there as he collided with Herring Jr. A little bit of contact, no bucket there for the Hurricanes. Mill Rats come back the other way and an offensive foul with Stover and that will be the game for him. Yeah, that was the right call, the correct call in that possession here. Stover moving as he tried to pick, try that two man game. Picked up that personal for moving in the moving screen. Now he's trying to get an explanation from the official but that definitely was the right call. Tough possession down here last time. Looked like the shot was kind of forced, but I would like to see the ball continue to go inside. Feed the beast. That's going to be one of the things that we need to say in our live stream broadcast. Feed the beast. And the beast is Mike Glover. You can't say enough for the things he's done when he's got the ball inside the paint. I mean, the Mill Rats have ran, you know, they've ran one guy at him. They've tried one on one. They've tried running two guys at him. I think now they got to be desperate and run three guys at him. They can't allow Mike Glover to get into a sweet spot, which is one or two feet away from the basket, actually anywhere in that painted area. 
He can get it done either facing the basket or his back towards the basket. He is prolific. He's got soft touch and great hands and finishes at the rim. And we spoke about it. It was going to be key to see how he would react in his usual role that we've seen him previously before last game where he was in the starting role. Kind of got got the foul trouble, wasn't very productive in that game. But you can see that in this reserve role, he flourishes. He flourishes in the reserve role. This is the right spot for him to be right now. If this is any indication this afternoon that he needs to be in the reserve role, then I don't know where there has to be an indication. I know they like to play the matchup. I know Coach Lopez likes to play the percentages, but Mike Glover is better suited as a reserve and not a starter. Two other games this afternoon in NBL Canada action. So far in the second quarter, the London Lightning lead the Windsor Express 37 to 21. Also taking place is the Orangeville A's taking on the Niagara River Lions, and we got no score of that one here. And we're in for a dandy finish here. 3.09 to go, 106-103. Justin Johnson, Kyle Hunt, as well as Shane Gibson, Mike Glover, and Bertrand on the court here for the Hurricanes. Allman Freeman, Fulsey, Doug Herring Jr., and Anthony Anderson for the Mill Rats. Shot clock at 10. Gibson cuts along the baseline. Oh, to Hunt in the paint and up and in. Just the right offensive set there coming out of the, uh, the, uh, the timeout. Good ball movement, good rotation. Nice two-man game between Gibson and Hunt and Kyle. Hunt able to convert, he's been able to do that all game long and he's in his role as a starter, playing very comfortable this afternoon. And Doug Herring Jr. with the crossover and used his speed to get to the hoop and puts it up and he's fouled and has a chance to complete the three point play. Wow, that was a fantastic crossover by Herring Jr. The second time we've seen it this afternoon was he's, where he was able to elude his defender. First time he was going left, this time he was going right. They need to neutralize the three-headed monster of the Mill Rats, the Hurricanes do. And make sure they gotta pay attention to detail, stopping Anderson, Freeman, and Herring Jr. Crucial, crucial defensive stops are coming up in this fourth. Herring Jr., eight of 13 from the field, 23 points. Mill Rats down by two, 108 to 106, and a big defensive stop there for the Mill Rats. Anderson has it now, lays it for Allman. Pass was a little bit too far, but Anderson comes up with it there. Two minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. A Little bit of a push off, Anderson gets away to Freeman and can't finish and Hunt there for the board for the Hurricanes. Good close out defensive recovery as they made the, the shot top for Freeman, challenged the shooter and had three guys on the board so they took care of that. Now they need to execute. Look to go inside the mic. Glover here, feed the beast. Glover loses the handle. And the leader of this Millrat team had a floating pass in there for Freeman, but that is tipped by Gibson out of bounds. Sometimes those passes, you've got to not try the feather, but have a lot on them so that doesn't happen, but it was tipped out of bounds. 20 to shoot here, still Millrat's basketball. That last trip down the court they had by the Hurricanes, the Millrats ran three guys at Glover, so the adjustment's been made. Herring Jr. Oh, that's an the long absolute, distance too, sorry Vince. That's an absolute dagger. I mean, Herring Jr. starting to feel it here. They look like they're gonna weigh heavily. The Mill Rats are offensively on Herring Jr. 70 seconds to go in this one. Gibson has the ball cross court over to Bertrand. Shot clock down to 10, puts it up, gets a little bit of contract from Volsey, no call. Play continues on. And we still are tied with one minute, 108, 108, Mill Rats, Hurricane, Scotiabank Center, in for a good finish here as Doug Herring Jr. has the ball, watched by Bertrand. Takes it, tries to go through three trees, and he's gonna be fouled there by Kyle Hunt. He just got bailed out by the official there as Herring Jr. drew the triple team. The rotation came, and it was early, they had it set. Looked like it was a good defensive play, but contact was made and that'll give them the opportunity now with 14 on the shot clock. They still have a foul to give here, Vets. That was team foul number four. Volsey has the ball. 
Back outside to Allman here. 40 seconds to go, Allman makes a move and that's banked off the boards, second chance opportunity. New 24 from downtown, Anthony Anderson. You see why that he's one of the top players in this league as he drained that from downtown to make it 111 to 108 and that quiets things down here at the Scotiabank Center. What an effort, what an absolute great play there on that second chance opportunity. Good job of rotating, blocking the shot coming down the lane, but Anthony Anderson standing wide open. The ball came right to him and he didn't hesitate. Caught it in rhythm and knocked down that huge triple for Coach Pond and the Mill Rats. So that's what's going to come down to it. Told you, Dan, defensive stops, making stops, getting the one and dones, rebounding, making it difficult for the three guys that have been pretty much, been very much productive offensively this afternoon for the Mill Rats. Anthony Anderson, no, Doug Herring Jr., as well as Gabe Freeman. This guy picks up some big offensive nights. As you mentioned, Harry Jr. 28, Freeman 31. Anthony Anderson not having an explosive offensive night, but he's been consistent. He's been over 60% shooting from the field. He's six for 13 from the field, two for six from downtown. And the yep. second one, not, no bigger than the first that he knocked down, but he, Games are going to be lost and won on the defensive side. Well, you and I are, of course, are big sports fans. We're going to use a pitching analogy for baseball. Sometimes he doesn't have his best stuff, but he's there and he's going to compete and he's going to come up with a win for you. So I figure we'll use that mentality to, to explain Anthony Anderson this afternoon. As you say, 6 for 13, 17 points. But he just put a dagger right now here in this Hurricane Heart. Yeah, Johnson puts it up and in. 26 seconds here. And Hurricane's electing to get the quick two and play this one out as there's a two set two second differential in the shot clock and the game clock. But they need a stop there. 111 to 110. Cross court over to Allman. Johnson there as he fouls there. Lopez screaming out instructions. Correction there. I thought there was a two second differential on that shot clock and game clock, but somehow it looked I think like. It was close. I think you were yeah, right. I think it was, yeah, but it looked like at, when they took that foul and they committed that foul, that the game clock was at 6.7 as well as the shot clock was at 6. So I'm not sure if they started the game clock before the ball was inbounded, before the. And it looked like that had to be the, the fact because I was pretty sure. I know you were right. You were dead seconds. on about it. Yes. Yeah, when they scored that basket, there was 30 seconds left. And then when they inbounded it, it looked like they either kept the clock rolling and they didn't get advantage of that, you know, that six seconds. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, that's six seconds that they pretty much, not to my mistake, because it's 24 second shot clock with 30 seconds left. That's six seconds that was unaccountable for. And I'm not sure if Coach Lopez picked up on that, but obviously he did because he's not making a point to point that out to the officials. But you and me, when the shot goes in, the game clock stops. Yeah. And the ball, the clock only starts when the ball's inbounded. So six seconds were lost in this game. Yeah. Team fouls are both five apiece here, so you're probably most likely well, most likely, you're yeah. for sure going to see yeah. a foul they like to, right away they here. Go, they have to go for the steal, you know, force a turnover or, or foul. And there it is. Ryan Lutz with the call here. Collision between Gabe Freeman and Shane Gibson. Yeah, lots of contact being created there in that inbound. So need to get one more foul here, either force the turnover with the violation or get a turnover on the inbound. If they get it inbound, they need the foul. Allman to inbound to Volsi. And he's quickly fouled there by Bertrand. And Volsi's Actually, disagreeing. Actually, you're going to say it to Johnson, pardon me. And Volsi's disagreeing that he was fouled. And it looked like he might have a case because he immediately caught it and he tossed it right back to the inbounder, which was Corey Allman. I'm sure it looked like that foul was a little late there. Anticipation. They might have anticipated that foul. Volsi might have a case here, but nonetheless, he needs to knock down these free throws. Volsi, 67% from the three throw line. 
Most known for his rebounding ability with this team. 12 rebounds in a game against the Moncton Miracles December 30th. Double digits in rebounds in two games so far this season. For the Millrats has a chance to make this a three-point deficit as he does as there's a timeout there called by the Halifax Hurricanes down by three, yeah. but. Ice water veins, ice water in his veins, knocking down those free throws, so. We're off to another magical <laughs> finish here at Scotia Bank. We're starting to be accustomed to these type of finishes, Dan. Well, I, I know one thing, if you and I are planning on doing some traveling and plans after our game, I think we may want to hold up because we may be delayed by overtimes. Yeah, absolutely, 4.5 seconds left. I mean, not sure what Coach Lopez is gonna draw up, something in the factor where they need to get Shane Gibson or either Justin Johnson coming off a couple screens off the inbound, get it in immediately. They don't have much time, so it's definitely gonna to have to be an inbound coming off a few screens and a catch and a shoot. So it's gonna be pretty interesting to see what Coach Lopez draws up here, but it's definitely gonna be for his two prolific shooters from beyond the arc. That's Justin Johnson and Shane Gibson, who's pretty much heated up in the last you know, 24 minutes, got it going late in the third quarter as well carried it over into the fourth. He's three for seven from beyond the arc with 19 points. Justin Johnson, he's two for four from beyond the arc with 11 points. Well, let's reset the situation for you. 4.5 on the game clock, shot clock shut off. Milrots have a foul to give if they choose to use it here. Hurricane basketball. Out on the court, Gibson, Clank Scales, Bertrand Hunt, as well as Justin Johnson, Doug Herring Jr., Anthony Anderson, Gabe Freeman, Allman, and Ricky Volsey. Swings it over to Gibson. He's gonna have a chance for three. Does it! Tie game! 113 to 113. Impossible, but here's a long distance shot. It just tickles the twine, but we'll but does it go in and we've got overtime once again. 113 to 113, Gibson impossible. That almost shot did not get off Finch. Incredible. incredible, that's all I can say. An incredible shot. Great diagram play drawn up by Coach Lopez. We talked about it in the timeout as either it was going to be Shane Gibson taking this shot or Justin Johnson and in rhythm Shane Gibson the absolute shot dagger, the assassin coming off of that screen and forcing this game into overtime. What I know one of these. I'm, I'm lost for words. This is back to back games here at Scotia Bank. This team does not give up. They play right to the final gun. They were down early in this one, down for most of this, came back. They're almost getting to be a version of the cardiac kids' vent. Oh and welcome back to overtime again, second straight. As the weather girls are here on the court, making some noise here, trying to get this crowd going, and they're gonna get some extra basketball here on a Sunday afternoon from the Scotiabank Center. 113 to 113 as we take a look at the play once again. It just barely gets it off, collision there, but got it to go, and that was a tough bucket for Gibson. 22 points this afternoon, nine of 15, and a big four of eight from downtown. As us going for an extra quarter here. Five minutes overtime. Overtime, of course, means that the fouls stay the same. And that could become a little crucial too when you see that the big man, Gabe Freeman, is still at five. It has really affected his because he was on pace. He had like 25 points by about halftime and only six since then because he got into some foul trouble and had to sit on the bench. So that's gonna be an early story here, here in overtime. 113, 113. I, I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as Vince and I are. We're here at the Scotiabank Center, Dan Hobson, Vince Williams. Overtime coming your way. Absolutely crazy yep. finish is gonna we're about to have in store here. We don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, you can't predict these games. You can't predict these finishes. 
you have to play to the final gun, and it's been indicative of the last two games here at Scotiabank. This Hurricane team is resilient. They never give up. There's no giving up. They could be down 17 points. They could be down 10 points. They could be down as much as 10 points in 30 seconds and still find a way to come back and force a game into overtime and win it as they did against the Miracles. Now they're setting the table here. Pretty much been playing from behind since the opening and tap and they were getting it done, slowly but surely, getting the stops that they needed, executing offensively, hitting timely shots, getting guys involved in their offense that they needed to get involved, such as Justin Johnson and Shane Gibson knocking down triples, and now they need to go to five minutes here and feed the beast. They need to go to Mike Glover and force, try to force somehow Gabe Freeman out of this game. He has five fouls trying to guard Mike Glover. Well, the five on the court here for the Hurricanes, Glover, Bertrand, Johnson, Hunt, and Gibson, as Almond from downtown nails that one. Him as well as Anderson, Herring Jr., Freeman, and Volsey here for the Mill Rats, and they have an early three-point lead as we've passed the 30-second mark of overtime. Yeah, defensive letdown on that last trip down. They can't allow Corey Almond to have that standstill wide-open jumper from beyond the arc, who's been lethal in the, in the attempts that he's had. Glover! There it is. There it is right there. Big spot in the game there, Dan, as they fed the beast in Mike Glover as he was able to maneuver his way inside the paint and, and forth the six in the siding foul on Gabe Freeman. Yeah, so here is more with limited minutes. We'll have to play down the stretch here as Stover Fouled out four points. Freeman fouled out 31 points. 35 points that are going to be have to watch the rest of this one here from the bench. Yeah, lots it's, of contact in that replay. There. That was lots of bumps, man. Lots of bumps, baby. They, they gave him at least three opportunities to not pick up his six. Herring Jr. almost lost his footing, recovers, and has the basketball and crosses the timeline for the Mill Rats and hands it off to Anthony Anderson, 116 to 116. Brief double team there for a second. Anderson uses the more screen to put it up with the shot clock down to seven and the rebound there by Bertrand. Quick transition here, Hunt has the ball just outside the baseline now. Outside to Gibson now as the shot clock's down to 15 with the crossover but hands it back to Hunt. Inside the paint to Glover and he's fouled there by Anderson. They just continue to feed the beast. They need to get it inside. Every trip down, Mike Glover needs to get his hands on the basketball. Nice breakdown split in the defense there was Gibson. Nice rotation inside, clear path. I mean, Herring Jr. needs to do a better job of getting up and not allowing that clear path pass to get inside that the paint there down low to Mike Glover. Glover has just been pretty much everything offensively he rattled that, that one around to area. get the shooters roll to go 10 to 12 from the line yeah, he's been a 32 force. points a force an absolute force this afternoon inside the paint no answer for mike glover it's just been tough it's got to be frustrating for a coach to try to defend a guy like this because he is just tough around the rim Good hands, quick feet, great decisions with the basketball. Doesn't turn it over, and he can finish out the run, and he can shoot free throws. What more can you ask from your six man coming off the bench in a reserve role playing at the four or the five position? 11 of 13, 33 points, as well as five rebounds for Glover. 118 to 116 here. 325 to go here. Moore back outside to Volsey. And he gets fouled by Glover. He's all right, that will be his third. But of course, as we know, that in overtime, the fouls, it's just basically works out to be as if it's the fourth quarter. So yeah, they, the teams were in, uh, both teams were in penalty. So there'll be three throws throughout the rest of this one for sure. Volsey will go to the line. He had a clutch three throws for the fourth quarter, but he can't nail the first one. Screws starting to tighten up a little bit here for the Mill Rats. But they have a lot of veteran leadership on the floor. So it's going to be very tough.
for the Hurricanes to put this team away. It's definitely going to come down to one possession here, deciding whether they're going to win or lose this one. One of two from the line makes it 118 to 117 for the Hurricanes here. Inside to Glover. On Moore. Double team, but coming back was Hunt, and he tried to jam it. And gets denied, and back the other way come the Millrats. Doug Herring Jr. cuts through the paint. Outside to Volsey from downtown. Can't get it to go. Tipped back out by Moore in a new 24 for the Mill Rats. Moore has impressed me. He hasn't had a lot of playing time because of the strong forward player that they have here, but he's had to play good and strong this afternoon as another three, this time from Allman, was no good, and Bertrand comes up with the ball. Johnson swings it over to Glover. Yeah, why not? Up Glover, Volsey, why not, you say? <laughs> why not? Left hand, he is eating right now. Nice left hand, teardrop, scoop shot in the lane. Right hand, left hand, doesn't matter. Mike Glover is a force. 120 to 117, Bertrand gets fouled. Tell you what, Dan, if Mike Glover hasn't put this league, as well as this division on notice in this performance, I'm not sure what type of game he needs to show that he's a force to be reckoned with going forward. Anderson from the line this afternoon is three of four. Now he's four of five as he sinks that first one. Makes it 120 to 118 and just easy for him. Too easy. Pretty much automatic from the free throw line is double A. Mm -hmm. 120 to 119, 210 to go. No sense going away from what was working right here. Gibson go with it. uses the Glover screen, puts the three up, and bounces up and gets the shooter's roll. A favorable bounce there, and that just hurts. That hurts the Mill Rats right now. But they can't afford the rush days. They've got to continue to be patient on offense here. 151 is a lot of time left, a two possession game here. They just need to be patient with their offense. Doug Herring Jr. here has the ball, uses the Volsey screen. Herring Jr. driving over to Moore and finishes. Moore having himself a good afternoon, that's six points. At six, I said mentioned earlier, against the Moncton Miracles December 30th, he's got six this afternoon. Makes it 123 to 121. That's a huge bucket. Nice catch and nice concentration to finish as Heron was able to draw the double team. Justin Johnson can't finish, but the rebound there by Gibson, and he throws it off of Volsey. It would be Halifax basketball, and a lot of time still on the shot clock, 23 seconds. Yeah, outstanding play there by Shane Gibson, not giving up on that shot, getting that rebound and forcing it off the Millrat defender and extending this possession. Those are the type of games, those are the type of things that happen in a ball game that can, can be the deciding factor, winning those 50-50s. 75 seconds to go, Glover inside to Hunt, and that's picked off by Anderson. Waiting for his teammates, he had a one on three, waits for everybody to come. There's Doug Herring Jr. back out to Volsey, wide open for three, can't finish. And Gibson with another board here. He's pestered there by Allman, almost lost the handle, but Johnson is right back there, and to get the basketball and he brings it up the court here past the timeline with 45 seconds to go. 123 to 121, Johnson there watched by Anderson. Cuts towards the paint, headed for Glover, he kind of mishandled it and he's gonna be called for a travel as he couldn't handle that steps. pass cleanly yep. and too many steps as you mentioned. Yeah, that's the right call, it's the right call. A little indecision there, probably the only times you can see in this replay Outstanding job of breaking down the defense there was Justin Johnson looking for the, the ball screen. Got the ball screen laid on the opposite side, broke down the defender. As you can see, Glover just took too many steps before he put it down. Anderson has some room, cuts towards the paint, dishes it back out to Allman here. Shot clock down at 10, 23 on the game clock. Allman uses the Volsey screen, cuts towards the paint, puts it up, tough bucket, can't get it to go. Rebounds in Glover's hands. And Justin, has, Justin Johnson has it now, and he's fouled by Doug Herring Jr. And that will be his second as the fans clap and make noise here at the Scotiabank Center, sensing that victory is within their grasp. Tough defensive stands here in the last three possessions by the Hurricanes. Outstanding job 
by Shane Gibson. Rebounding the basketball offensively, extending a possession. And then the last two defensive trips, he was able to get the defensive rebound. He can't speak enough for the leadership of Shane Gibson stepping up at the pivotal time in this game for the Hurricanes. Justin Johnson nails both three throws, five of five from the line this afternoon. Three of nine from the field, 12 points. And it's a four point deficit and 10.4 to go here at the Scotia Bank Center. And I think it's probably one of those games that, you know, the undermanned Millrats gave the Hurricanes a run, but. Yeah, they had their opportunity in regulation. I mean, they had as big as the lead as 17 at one point. So, I mean, they had their chances. I mean, the biggest lead, excuse me, the biggest lead was 12 in the second quarter with 339 left. But, I mean, it's been back and forth, back and forth in this second half. It's the game of, of two halves. The first half, the Mill Rats were able to jump all over the Hurricanes. Particularly, you pointed out in that first quarter, giving up 32 points. They settled down the defense the Hurricanes did in the second quarter, did a better job of closing out and making it tough for their better shooters for the Mill Rats. And in the third, extended it just a little bit more. You can see that they started to, to come on a little bit more defensively and hit some timely shots down the stretch of that third quarter to close it out. They won the quarter by closing it out strong offensively with back-to-back -back triples. And moving into the fourth, that's when things got really tight for the Mill Rats as they, they started to not move the ball around. They relied on the one-on-one -on -one game coming either from Anthony, John, Anthony Anderson or Doug Herring Jr. to provide that one-on-one -on -one presence. And then when Gabe Freeman fouled out early in this overtime, that was a huge factor as he provided 30 plus points. Almond inbound, gets it to Anderson, tries to use the Volsi screen from downtown, can't hit. More after it, but it will go out of bounds and it'll be Hurricanes basketball, 3.9 to go. Uh, as the fans the start to stand up here at the Scotiabank Center, sorry, Vince. No, go ahead, Dan, they pretty much should do it here. 3.9 seconds left, they pretty much need you know, something dastardly have to happen for the Hurricanes to lose this one. But you gotta speak of the resiliency and the no quit and no give up. They continue the fight to the end is the Hurricanes. That's going to be one of their models that this team will not give up. They will continue to fight for the whole 48 minutes. You need to put together a good game plan to put away these guys because they are not gonna go quietly into the night or the afternoon. As you, we've all talked about, the biggest lead of this game was 17, and that was the Millrats, and they come all the way back and have a four-point victory here as it stands right now here at the Scotiabank Center. As you said, it just talks about the resiliency, and it also like really talks about like this, uh, this combine that the uh, league did over the summertime, the spring and summertime, and finding some of these elite players because you know, if you probably take a look at the stats from last year, you probably will see that the offense is definitely up, oh, yeah. finding all these awesome, excellent basketball players. Yeah, you got to give it a, you got to give the hand to the front, uh, front office staff of the Halifax Hurricanes when they put together a game plan on bringing guys in and what type of guys, character guys, on and off the court when they bring these guys in to provide, you know, the type of games for on the court, but you gotta have leaders off the court. And it looks like this core group that they bring in has been outstanding thus far. Gibson just holds on to it as time expires here in overtime. Halifax Hurricanes improve their record to five and one with a 125 to 121 victory over the St. John Millrats. Their record moves to three and two. So we'll just have a couple of Last minute thoughts on this one, as you say, the resiliency of the team to come all the way back from 17 and win this one. You know, talks about the character, and you also mentioned that you said you were a fan of Mike Glover coming off the bench. Game high, 35 points for the Hurricanes. And he's been outstanding coming off the bench in that particular role. He's been getting it done since the preseason game, providing the offense inside and outside you can't say enough the role that Mike Glover has played for this organization. He's pretty much right now, I would say, the top candidate as being their outstanding player early in this NBL season here, this inaugural season for the Halifax Hurricanes. I mean, the role that he plays, 
you can see it. He gets it done night in, night out. But I mean, the role as a reserve is pretty much suited for him. I'm not the coach. I'm not trying to, you know, give any type of insight on this, but we've seen these games. We've been witness to these games, and we have seen the productivity that he's been given in the different scenarios of the roles that he's being asked to do. And the one that he's excelling at is at the reserve role. You gotta give him credit for it. He's done an outstanding job thus far. He certainly has. He's been instrumental to the big five and one start that the Hurricanes have. Just well, that would just about wrap things up. Your next uh, Hurricanes game here at the Scotiabank Center will be Thursday night. They'll take on the Island Storm. Game time is at seven o'clock, and of course we'll have it here on the web for you at that time. Vince will have it for you. So for Vince Williams, as well as the Silver Vision crew, this is Dan Hobson saying so long and good afternoon. You've been watching Hurricanes and NBL basketball here on YouTube.